Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Across the gap here, you see the Rosemourne Monastery. Clark trying to get a peek of it, admiring it from afar. We believe that this is where Kresh Kalek is located, and we may be able to meet up with more of my people, more of the Githyanki. They are looking for this mysterious artifact. In fact, we just tried to hand off this artifact to one of the Githyanki, and we were ordered to be killed for having it. Obviously, that didn't go particularly well for those Githyanki. Maybe that was a rogue faction or something. Not too sure. We're going to see how this plays out. This is... Wait. Oh, well, oh. These markings. Tirsu script scratched in the ground. As I expected. A crash must be nested in the temple below. You are we so right. There at once. I completely agree. I'll lead us there in my own time. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's get to it. Very well. You may lead. But if we stray too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. Well, that, I mean, I don't think you have to worry about that. We're literally heading there right now. Man, Lazel tells me she likes me, and now she's trying to push some boundaries already, I feel like. There is one vendor that we can talk to before entering the monastery. Let's see what Lady Esther has to say. Stop there! Not one step further! How dare you! I left your stupid crash. Why are you still chasing me? I don't even want your bloody eggs! I have no idea what you're talking about. Cobb, I'm not chasing you. You, you're not from the crash. No. Oh, how fortuitous. And not just because you're not trying to kill me. Nod your head, play along. Find out what you can. Take her head when it's done. <laughs> this could be an auspicious meeting, come to think of it. I was hoping to meet our friendly guests. And why is that, Lady Esther? I was given a task. One surprisingly difficult for someone like me. And yet it would be simplicity itself for you. I need a Githyanki egg, which I know may sound a little unsavory. Yes! Shkaketh! You would steal away one of our children! How rude! This is exactly why you people have a bit of a reputation, you know. Are you kidding me? As I was trying to say, this is an entirely benevolent act and all for a very good cause. And what is this good cause exactly? The best cause there is. Knowledge. Inside that temple lies one of your creches, which I gather has its very own hatchery, presumably chock full of eggs. The Society of Brilliance have asked me to acquire one of your people's rows so they can incubate it, and once it hatches, raise it in their tradition. They believe a gift Yankee raised in a peaceful, nurturing environment can overcome its violent nature. I would argue that I don't have a violent I nature. Can deliver to the society, and you will be well rewarded. Steal one of Gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> so, what do you say? Well, um, I think that killing you is going to be very satisfying. I knew I was right about you beasts. Now, we do have to be a little delicate here because you see Lady Esther is one of the... What is this? An enemy is attacking you. They will attack a new target if possible. Instinctive charm. This is a reaction from Gale. Wow. Very nice. Oh, so I get florist. Oh, okay, Gale. Okay, Gale. Now, we do need to be careful. We are going to put on non-lethal damage and hope for the absolute best here. That turns on for everyone in the party. Now, the reason we want to knock her out instead of killing her, I suppose I'll show you in, in uh, just a moment. Let's go for a swing. It's a miss. 
choice but to Clark, keep going. control yourself. Do not send her into next week. Control yourself. <laughs> Easy does it. Wow, that's really close. That was really close. Let me also turn off this passive magic damage. And we're going to try to just punch her. Just a straight punch. Okay, now that she's knocked out, we can sneak down and pickpocket her, I th think. Uh-oh. 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 I need a lot of gear off of her. And she doesn't have any in her inventory. This used to work. Was this patched? I gotta go back. I, li I literally gotta go back. I literally gotta go back. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have like four items planned that come from this character. Shit. Hello, Lady Esther. Stop. I left your stupid crash while you're still chasing me. Yeah, 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 whatever you say. Yeah, 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 whatever you're talking about. I don't really care. Uh, let's try our hand at pickpocketing her. First of all, I am going to need the graceful cloth. How hard is that to get? That's an 18. I'm going to go for this first. Shit, I actually need so many items. If any of this goes wrong, I'm in trouble. Maybe I should just buy them. I can't believe I'm about to suggest something like buying them. But I do need to make sure I get them. Show me wares. Uh, I need this graceful cloth. That's 1,800 gold. Uh, then this is another five fucking hundred. And I bet I could steal that necklace. I bet I could steal the necklace. Hold on. We're not going to buy the necklace. We're going to swap back. And we're going to attempt to just take that. We got it. Now I'm going to attempt to take all of the gold back. <laughs> well, let's take these first. And I'm going to take these two. Uh, and like, do we need anything else? Do you want these grapes? I guess I'll take these grapes and this cabbage and this bread and these pears and this uh, ham and this chicken. Uh, anything? I'm going to take this, this arrow. I'm going to take this arrow, this arrow, this health potion, this, these, both of these health potions. Oh, gaseous form potion. You never know when you need one of those. Featherfall potion? Yeah, you need that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. What else? Do I really want these gloves? I mean, not really. What about these? I'll take these boots. Uh, scroll of fireball? Sure. Oh, my God. I can't believe she caught me. A violent confrontation. Okay. Well, where were we? Oh my god, she fucking fireballed my party. She fireballed herself and then cast Featherfall. Uh, we are we are going to turn knockout on just in case. We're gonna turn off the bonus damage and we're gonna smack her down. Now what happens if we loot her? Can I get my gold back? I guess I'll take this. Yeah, I'll take that. All right, good trade, thank you. Some of these items that we looted are going to be really, really, really important to us. The first one that is super important is this. You gain Cat's Grace and increase your dexterity score by two to a maximum of 20. This will bring our dexterity score up to 18. We need to dye this black and summer green dye. Perfect. Now we're looking the part. So with that taken care of, next, we're going to need the gloves of Cinder and Sizzle. Your unarmed attacks deal an additional one to four fire damage. So an added one D4. This counts with our flurry of blows. This is multiple attacks. So we'll get multiple one D4s. We'll just go ahead and equip that. As a result, we do lose two AC. Uh, as long as you're not wearing armor or holding a shield. I don't think this applies to anyone in our party right now, except for maybe Gale. 
So if we take a look at Gale and take his shield off, his AC goes down to 13. If we give him this, if we give him this, it stays the same because his chest piece is armor. So I don't know if I have a backup plan for that just yet. However, the necklace that we looted, this bad boy, where is it? Where did I put it? Where is it? In Asterion's inventory, he looted this necklace. The, I don't think I'm saying this right, Periapt of Wound Closure. When downed, you automatically stabilize at the start of your turn. Sure, that's nice. But every heal we do will maximize the amount of hit points restored. Now, keep in mind, we have multiple ways of healing on Astarian. We have his Bardic Inspiration, which will heal someone because of our gear. We also have a brand new spell that we picked up. It's a level three spell slot, so we can't cast it yet. Warden of Vitality, that will, will allow me to bonus action heal for the next 10 turns in combat. Could be crazy good. Could be really, really good. Also for our short rest song, does that mean that everyone gets full health back with the short rest song? That applies to healing done to them. Oh, so not outward? Well, let's see. Uh, this should heal for eight. Should be easy to test. It healed for eight plus two. If I want to heal Lazel, it should once again heal for eight. That was only six. Okay, so you're right. Maximize the number of hit points restored. Does it say that it's only personal healing? No, it does not. No, it does not. Well, that's disappointing. Either way, we'll use that for the time being. I don't have another necklace plan for a Starion or anything, so I think it'll be fine. There is a wheel here that leads towards the monastery. We're gonna need someone strong to fucking turn it, though. Hmm. Do we know Best anyone strong? Do we, of course, know the strongest and smartest Githyanki and all of Blackard's army? This can't have been used in a while. Oh, and he's even saying it was tough. All aboard. And really, we could have walked around, but this is just more of the direct route. I don't think everyone's coming along for the journey just yet, though. Come on, guys, don't be shy, get on. This is totally safe. We don't have anything to worry about. Spoiling for a fight. No mere temple. This was a monastery devoted as much to study as to worship. Oh, how incredible. So it'll be free of foul-smelling beasts, then? So it'll be free of foul-smelling beasts. No, I don't know if that's the case. Now, if we walk up to the front door of the monastery, I believe we should still see a cutscene. I don't think any of our actions would have uh, caused this to play out differently. At least I think so. So our party is going to confidently walk up to the front of the building. That's enough. On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Oh, I bet that's gonna go well. Oh, great shot! <laughs> I feel like I just gave away my position. As I thought. Through the doors. Now. The captain is expecting you. Forward. Carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. So, it's not that the people in the crash are bad. It's the fault of everyone else for making them have to be on high alert. I see how that is. Well, unfortunately, the door is locked. And if you hover over it, you can see that in enchanted security, this is magically locked. So I will not be able to open that. Also, as we approach the front door. The better of you. Do not let it. Stay away 
from the Githyanki. My artifact is telling me to stay away from my own people. They're hunting you. They want the artifact. They'll stop at nothing to take it from you. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But I still need to get inside this building. I'm not going to turn away just because a little trinket tells me to. We should be able to do everything outside of the monastery in a single video, and then we'll dedicate the next video to going inside the main part. As we walk in through the window, we see a cobalt looter who has a fire wine belly debuff and is sleeping. And it seems as though this cute little guy roamed in here and passed out without even noticing that Kalark was present. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait, do we still have the, oh, we, do we still have the passive on? That's exactly what happened. I was like, there's no way I didn't kill this thing in a single hit. Yeah, it's more like it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, Clark. You just did fucking half of Mysterian's health and damage. I don't even know why that exploded. Uh, clearly it moved over to the wine, but I don't know why it did that. I had no fire in that attack at all. Well, everybody crouches down. We'll start to make our way into the next room. Perhaps I should short rest really fast. We shall. Oh, yeah, my new gloves. Oh, yeah, my new gloves. It is actually possible to sneak through this entire area without being seen. See if we can do it. <laughs> That's a totally normal punch. That's totally normal. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I can't imagine why they would have woken up. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm going to pick this one up and throw it into the other one at the end of the walkway here. I was hoping that would do a bit more damage. I was hoping that would be enough to finish him off. In fact, I might just pick up this box and chuck it at him. I'm really not too far away from my allies. They're just in the other room. But I really think I'm doing just fine. Like I should be able I should be able to solo most of this room, I imagine. We'll fire off a ranged attack onto one of the kobolds on the high ground and end our turn. This is a surprise round, so not everyone appears to be surprised. We're seeing a dash from one of the kobold looters making their way up to Kalark, stopping just short of the fire there, as many more of the kobolds seem to be scurrying around the room. They begin throwing stones at Kalark. We will have some cutting words coming over from the next room. Many cutting words. Kobolds suck! Asterians just over there spouting nonsense, making them second guess their ability. Good, this is what we like to see. Astarian has involved himself in the fight at this point, so I suppose we will try to scurry into the next room. We do have a ranged attack we can use on one of the kobolds. That takes them down, and we'll end our turn right there. Now, Kalark, fists ready, punches the kobold directly in front of him. That's a lot of fire. It's not always going to be like that, right? If this isn't, like, actually how fire works, right? We're going to pick up this other kobold and throw him into one of his close-by friends. If it'll let me move. Uh, Kalark doesn't want to seem to do that. I don't know why. Very good, very good. And then we'll do a flurry of blows. Actually, do we want to spend the key point? I could probably just kill this guy in a single hit. Let's see it. God damn it. Yeah, I think this is all being caused by the fire wine belly. I think 100%. It's it's because my gloves are igniting the wine in their bodies. <laughs> oh, we see another throw happening on Kalark. He does take four damage for it. He is feeling pretty crummy at this point, let me tell you. More ranged attacks coming his way. None of them really connecting, though. We're going to see Astarian step out and fire off a ranged attack to finish off one of the kobolds here. Unfortunately, we don't have any more attacks we can do. I'm just going to line of sight a little bit. Now, as we go back towards the kobolds, it looks like they are continuing to push 
for damage on Kalark. Will I kill myself if I attack? Let's find out. Yes. The answer is the answer is yes. Lazel's seen enough of this shit. She's coming in to defuse this situation. In fact, the kobolds seem to be coming to her. Astarian's going to fire off his hand crossbows and then continue to scurry away. Uh, Gale is going to shoot a fire bolt at the kobold, which does not connect. The kobolds will probably continue to move into this room. No, they start to throw stones at Lazel now. Astarian is in position, so is Lazel. She swings her fire sword. I can't imagine why things have gone wrong. Notice she took no damage, though, from those explosions. We might be able to learn something from her. We might be able to learn a little something. <laughs> Clark didn't make it. He didn't make it out, boys. GG. It's been a good run. Lizelle says something about stop being so lazy all the time, and Kalark rises back to his feet again. Uh, we have used our short rest as well as our short rest song, so it looks like as we clear the first combat encounter here, seems like a good time to go to bed. Now, there is, in fact, more kobolds still around. Every now and then, you'll see one of these barrels slurping, gurgling, chugging. Don't linger. The, uh, the intrusive thought has crossed my mind of what happens if you throw a cobalt barrel at an enemy. And I don't know. But for now, let's go to sleep. We could daydream about that. Night, night dream about that. Actually dream about that. I've come to sate you and be sated. Oh. You follow. I am intimidated, but I'm not going to let it show. I am ready. Chat, if I get banned, it's been great. It's been great streaming for you. Thank you for being here. So you think. Let's see if you're right. You are a child of Gith. You train relentlessly. You know your body inside and out. It is time you knew mine. Oh my god, hey, all right. All right, Kalark. Close your eyes. What a great leaf. And submit. No, you submit to me. After you can take whatever you desire. <laughs> <laughs> Is this just a battle of who? can persuade the other one? Is that, is that what this is? She's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I am ready. I'm Kalark. Oh! <gasps> You awake in pain. Your back, your hands, <laughs> even your tongue ache. It's time to rise. Dawn is upon us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you made a fine partner. You will be an effective Kitharak. I don't know what a Kitharak is. Of course. I'm as extraordinary a lover as I am a warrior. <laughs> you are a fit specimen yourself, Ken. Fit enough to wield a silver sword of your own, should Vlacketh be so generous. I hope that she is. Do you think we could do this again soon? Like, are you good? Are you good with this? You like what this is? Love. I might give you a lay, should Wait. my whim so take me. What did I but say? I won't give you love. Do you think we could make now, love again? Your moment's over. She's like, we can fuck, but there's no love in it. Every blink proves exhausting. A long day awaits you. Oh, I like that we can just see Kalark's ass right there, but we didn't see anything else. Good, I don't have a debuff. Good, I don't have a debuff. Good, 
Good, good, good. I was actually worried that it was going to be so strenuous that I wouldn't be able to perform my tasks today. It looks like that is not the case. Well, the party gathers. Let's see what else we can find here in the monastery. There is a somewhat easy way of scaling the back cliffs here to get up to the roof. It's probably the easiest way of climbing. Uh, I'll try to do that with my party. I'm not convinced Gale can make the jump. He might have to shadow step up. Oh, he cannot. Yep, Gale can't make the jump. Oh, there he goes. Good job, Gale. I'm just trying to help myself to this doorway. I'm even going to make the doorway myself. Barricade getting punched down. We also need to turn our passive damage on. Okay, we are good. So as that door falls, we are just above the room that the kobolds are in. I don't know if there's anything in here. There's many things in here. There's many things in here. These are... Uh, Gramishkas. Silly little creatures. They have an affinity with magic. Yeah, they're allergic to magic. Now, what I don't know is, do does the extra damage that my fists add into the equation count as magic damage? Nope. Okay, I'm going to pick up that one. Throw it into that one. That didn't work. We're going to finish up this turn with a flurry of blows onto this one right here. And that will take it down. Astarian is going to fire off a crossbow shot at the 1 HP. That does finish it off. And Lazelle is going to run up next to Kalark and do a big old swing on a tiny little creature. With the rest of her turn, we're going to fire off a shot with our bow. She does have the... Oh, no, I never gave it to her. The Titan String Bow that we bought. She should definitely uh, be using that. But she's not just yet. We'll go ahead and end these turns. Good start. The Gromishkas on the other side of the room begin walking their way up towards us now. By the way, if you want an alternate way of getting into this room, this barricade here leads outside... And, oh, almost showed it to you. There's a waypoint right there, a waypoint that we already used to get in here. Now, if I cannot deal damage with magic, I won't. We skip Gale's turn and we start swinging on the monk. That second attack does miss, unfortunately, but a toppling strike always gets the job done. Lazel follows up with a swing of her own onto one of the Gramishkas. 70% chance to hit, and it does. We're going to use our extra attack on another. We take that down. And lastly, cut a third into pieces. We probably could action surge and just keep that gravy train going, but Astarian wants to get in, fires off his hand crossbows, and does not kill off the creature. I am not going to action search for that. Instead, we are going to see a bite happen. We can cutting words to try to make it miss. It does not. Gale's going to end its turn, and we are going to see Kalark chuck the damn rat as far across the room as he can. That... I thought I was going to take more damage than that. I thought that was going to be a little bit better. Now we test everyone's accuracy to see if they can hit the small rodent with their ranged weapon from across the room. Oh, Lazel, while you may be an adequate lover, your archery leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> All right. There actually are not too many fights in the outside of the monastery here. We're doing very, very well for ourselves so far. There are weapons strewn about, the, let's call it a campus, basically everywhere that the monastery, the, the land that this monastery is on. There are a few weapons strewn about here that allow you to solve a puzzle back here in the monastery. Swift the fun thing is that you don't have to use any of those weapons to solve this puzzle. The monastery's notable keepers adorn these intricate panels. Lathandarian monasteries of this size were usually overseen by dawn masters, esteemed members of the clergy. Several of the pictured dawn masters remind you of monks who would dedicate their lives to mastering specific weapons of war. 
I am going to you just examine all of these. The reconsecration of the monastery conducted by Dawnmaster Seed. Even song before the Zenith Day, celebrated by Dawnmaster Stockhold. Dawnmaster Vasaid wielding. The rest of the inscription and picture has shattered away. And one more. Dawnmaster Welkin Glory beckons forth the rising sun in Lathander's name. As we look around the room, the clues in the center are just one part of the information that we're getting here. On the northwest uh, pedestal, we see a ceremonial longsword illuminated, showing us what it looks like when things are working. Now, I think, I think, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we're supposed to put an axe on this one. Uh, does it need to be a great axe? I don't know if that even matters. We will know pretty quickly, though, whether or not this worked. Nope, that, oh, that didn't work. Oh, that, that didn't work. That didn't work. Uh, two of these use... One uses a mace and one uses a, a warhammer. Let's see if I have a mace. Does the mace work? Yes. The regular weapons I have work here too. Hey, good insight, Kalark. Do we have a warhammer? We have several of them, in fact. I'll take Astarians because I don't think he's ever going to use it, and we will place that upon the pedestal. So, if a great axe didn't work, perhaps perhaps a normal axe will. I do have some hand axes. Let's uh, remove from wares, send to Kalark, and place it upon the pedestal. I thought the last one was an axe. Is it not? That's a hand axe and a great axe I tried. Ooh, and an old key in the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my only axe that I think would work, and I'm wondering if it's because it's a plus one that they're rejecting it. Well, rest assured, there are other ways of cracking this egg. Let me make sure, by the way, that I drink my elixir of giant strength. I nearly forgot. If we make our way across that small gap, there is an enchanted door that has the Morning Lord's Bulwark set upon it. Lathander's warding light protects this door from any harm, dealing less than 50 damage. If only there was another way! Stop shooting everything, it's weird. Punch it. <laughs> Thank you. If only there was another way! Like a wall over here, that happens to be crumbling. We break our way through, and inside, a guardian of faith just so happens to be protecting a ceremonial battle axe. Now, this guardian of faith is a level four cleric spell, if I do recall correctly, and it cannot leave that area, but it will protect everything inside of that area until it's killed. Every time it attacks, it loses HP. So our options here are to potentially try and steal the ceremonial axe with like a mage hand or something. I think that might work. Or just fight this thing. I mean, the mage hand may not work. Uh, the funny thing about it is though, that um, the guardian of faith can't move. So therefore, Lays out why. Why? Therefore, all we need to do is sit out here and continuously attack it. Now, let me give Lazel that Titan String Bow. She's been waiting on that. That's going to start to scale her range damage with her strength. Like, it might be mad at us, but who cares? We're good. Oh, ah! Until the camera moves. For no reason. 
Oh, you hate to see it. Oh, you hate to see it. Hit those hand crossbows. He's literally not moving and you're missing him. At least Lazelle can land her shot. One more in the chamber, only a 30% chance to hit. Wait, do I have three attacks per turn now on Lazelle? Damn. For Gale, we're just going to shoot a firebolt at its chest. It does miss, and that's fine. It cannot attack us as long as we don't get too close. You hear that, Kalark? Oof. Try Lazelle again. One more shot like that, and we have it. Come on. Oh, I only had time to kill. Three shots on the first turn for some reason. Will the hand crossbows do it? No, they will not. So let's try another firebolt. I could commit with some higher level spells, but there's no reason to rush it. Let's just take our time. We're fine. One more damage. Come on, Astarian. You could do it. All right. The ceremonial battle axe. Right there. We'll take that. You could also potentially lockpick the reward area in this room, but I want to say the check on it is crazy high. It's like a 30 to get the door open. Uh, the final ceremonial battle axe is right here. We place it upon the pedestal and this door opens. The wall opens on the north side of the room. Inside this sack, we find the Dawnmaster's crest as well as a note to the next Dawn Master. To the next Dawn Master, I don't think we're going to make it, but the blood is secure. We closed it off with magic. Only one of our own can take it. If anyone else tries, the walls will fall and they won't get out of here alive. Should that happen, pray for Rosemorn, but do not mourn. It's for the best. In death, new life, always. This blood sounds important. It still be here somewhere. It does sound important. It really does. Uh, we're gonna leave all of those ceremonial items behind. I mean, I guess I could pick these up just to sell them back in town, but we don't really need them. So that's the majority of what's going on here on the top floor inside, but there is still more to see. If you've never seen the Rosemorn Monastery before, there is an important book. I don't want to spoil exactly what the book is for just yet. Just know that it's located right here. The Old Maintenance Records. If we go ahead and read this. Reminder to the caretaker, when oiling the machine, make sure you don't grease the statues themselves. Stone becomes loose of late and has a tendency to slip. Novice Paran was rumored to have triggered a full spin once. We'll just keep that with us in our brains as we continue to explore. That's going to be some fall damage. Yeah, man. And to forgive me, we have to fire the lance. I wonder what Gale thinks about this. A magic mouth spell. So that voice must be from someone long deceased. Yeah, there must be. There is one more encounter we can do without going into the thick of the monastery which I'm trying to save for next episode. It's very githyanki focused. We're going to get a ton of lore in there. Last time when I played through this in single player, they told me to go talk to the guy in charge. So I did that, but unfortunately missed out on a ton of side content in the lower levels. I don't want to make that same mistake this time. There are some birds here. Funny enough, there is a quest to talk to these birds, but we didn't go that way. So we didn't pick it up. Uh oh. Giant Eagle regards you with disdain. I can't imagine why we all just started approaching its nest. Turn away from the eagle as you approach, indicating that you are not interested in its nest. That's an 18 bardic inspiration. Fuck. Ah. All right, well. Who did that? Who do we blame? Who do we blame? It was Gale, right? 100%. We blame Gale. Well, Kalark approaches. He's going to do a toppling blow. Can't reach his destination. Are you kidding me? Who are you talking to? Do you know who I am? I can reach anything. 
I am the strongest and smartest of all of the Githyanki! Wow, I killed Mama Bird in one turn. Uh, Astarian is going to fire off two shots from the hand crossbow. Gale is going to fire off a fire bolt cantrip. 70% chance to hit. It does not. Ooh, I would have taken that bet too. I really thought he was going to land that. Let's move up with the... It says we can't reach the destination again. I still don't believe it. Let's move up with that sword of ours. Cutting the eagle nearly into two pieces. And on the follow-up swing, we do. This is where you can get a ceremonial warhammer if you were so inclined. We didn't need it. We brought our own warhammer. There is one more piece of loot up here on the roof. I don't remember if it's worth it or not, but let me jump across and try to get it. It's located over this way. I th thought. Uh, that's not the chest I was looking for. Perhaps. Oh, it's over there. It's on the eastern side instead. Man, Kalark really has some ups, doesn't he? He can go quite far. This is without any enhancements to it. The chest is painted and inside the Holy Lance Helm. Creatures who miss their attack rolls against the wearer must make a dexterity saving throw or take one to four radiant damage. This is medium armor and I looked this one up beforehand. I have been seeking this one out. I thought this would be a great item for Lazelle herself to wear. She does have a helmet already. It's the one that allows her to use Hunter's Mark. I haven't cast Hunter's Mark once. So we'll just go ahead and put that helmet on. Now, if enemies do miss her, she does have 18 AC, so it's likely they're gonna take a little bit of damage as a result. So what happens if we move into the main area of the monastery now? We are already kind of weak. Maybe I should short rest first. Let's go ahead and do that. Just get Kalark back up in fighting form. We know that the Githyanki sequestered away some people into this place. We don't know if they're mad at us. I mean, they really shouldn't be, to be honest with you. This lever on the wall on the south side opens up the door that we tried to get through earlier, but was magically locked. There is also a scroll on this side, scroll of gust of wind. And for whatever reason, you can grab it through the bars. So you don't even have to unlock that one. But for the other potion, I think that might be a fire resist. I'm not too sure what that is. Let me go ahead and try to pick that lock. 22. So we got the secret stuff from the area upstairs. Potion of mind reading. We'll take that with us as well. We made quick work of the monastery, but we are only halfway done because the Githyanki Kresh resides just through... Well, that's a little anticlimactic. Just through this door that I had trouble seeing in the camera. We'll be making our way in there next time. And there is a bunch of lore we have never seen before. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again very soon.